Okay, so an object. So our flag, anything you see. I mean, something can only look red if you supply red light. Now, like the red of the griffin on the flag over there, if I shine yellow light on it, would it look red? Yeah, because yellow light is made up of red and green. So there would be red light present. Okay, so that there that light. It may be in, in parts of other light. It's like here, the little blocks. In white light, they have that Roy G B of colors, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. But when I put it in yellow light, notice we get this yellow light because we have a red light and a green light together. Well, red pretty much looks red. Now there's some pr issues here because this is color by subtraction. Okay, keep in mind that the pigments that make these work by subtraction, so it's it's hard to get everything perfect. But we still have red, we still have orange, we still have yellow, we still have green, because we have green. But the blue looks black. The violet looks red, because remember, violet is made up of red and blue. Remember, there's red in the violet, which is why it looks light. We only get the black one. Over here, when we only put it in blue light, notice the red one looks black, the orange one black, the yellow one black. Green looks a little blue, because actually in green pigment there's a blue in there. Blue looks blue, and the uh, violet looks blue, because again, the violet has blue in it. We put magenta on here, we take away the green component, but red, red, and red, because to make orange and yellow, I need some, G word, green, I need some green to make red. Notice my green looks black, no green. Blue looks blue, and violet looks violet, but the green is black. You see the best ones are these two, when we combine them, because it works out the best. Which leads us to color by subtraction, which we've talked about somewhat, but not formally. This is how color by reflection works. It's how color by absorption works. There we run it through the, the I mean, when I run it through this green, like I pulled out the green filter. It runs through a green filter because there it's absorbing all the colors except for green. It only lets green through. And it's this stuff called pigment. Now pigment is like you a lot of times from mineral sources. It's that stuff we talked about before. It absorbs, it selectively absorbs and reflects certain things. It subtracts. And if you subtractive colors, if I combine all the subtractive colors, I should get black. Although any of you who've ever mixed a lot of paint together, do you get black? Or do you get a kind of a yucky brown color? Yucky brown color. Then in reality, you actually get a yucky brown color. Um, black's actually one of those harder ones to work with. Anyone need more time? So the primary colors of subtraction are cyan, magenta, and yellow. So you could actually make a little color wheel like you had before. You know, like this one, the middle would be black. So you have cyan, yellow, and magenta. But then you have, let's see, magenta is green, cyan, chart. So we have red and green and blue are the complementary colors, and they combine to make black. Now, you might say, well, I didn't learn that in art. I learned blue, red, and yellow in art. Well, let's think, when did you learn blue, red, and yellow? How old were you? Fairly young, right? Well, let's think about it. Cyan, blue. What's easier for a five-year-old? Blue. blue. What's easier for magenta or red? Red. You know, you learn it that way because, again, you just you learn it really early. But on that, but cyan, magenta, and yellow. I know it, working with dyes. Um, if I work with those three dyes, if I want to make something like a rainbow color, I would just use those three. Cyan usually turquoise it comes out as turquoise, magenta, and yellow. I put those together. I'm going to end up with a rainbow because wherever, like wherever they 
overlap, we're going to get different colors depending on how much you get. Again, variations. If I get more yellow than magenta, I'm going to get kind of an orange color. You know, that sort of thing. So it varies. But again, I don't want them all together because I get a yucky brown color. Anyone need more time? No. No, that's, that's the key. Like when you're making combining dyes, you don't want them always to overlap. If you're using all three of those, you don't want them to overlap because the middle you get. Uh, that's why you see sometimes in a tie dye, like you get the spiral thing. You ever notice in the very middle, it might be a little, it's like kind of dark. That's where they overlap. You know, you get that brown color on that. Good? Now, why is it called subtraction? Well, if we look at blue, when white light hits blue, it absorbs red, orange, and yellow, and it reflects green, blue, and violet. So it absorbs. Yellow absorbs blue and violet, but reflects red, orange, yellow, and green. So if I took some blue dye and some yellow dye to, and mixed them together, what is the only thing that both reflect? Green. What did you learn before? What did you learn back in the day? Blue and yellow make green. Because it's subtraction, because when you mix them together, the yellow part absorbs the blue and the violet. The blue part absorbs red, orange, and yellow light. The only thing both of them reflect is green. So it subtracts us. It's subtracting light. Whereas with our little box, were we subtracting or adding? To get white. Was I turning off things or turning on things? I was turning them on. Notice the more light I added, the more white I get. Here, we take away. We're taking away the idea of subtraction on that. And traditional printing. Traditional printing. We, they always call it four, like four plate or four color printing. If you ever look at a newspaper, look at the bottom like if they have a color picture. And you'll probably know somewhere they probably have like three little, four little boxes or little dots or things like that. You'll notice it's a, there's a magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. Those are the alignment dots because they run the newspaper through four presses. When they make the newspaper, if it has, if it, if it has color pictures, if it just says black and white, they only need one press. But to make color, you need four presses. One puts down magenta. One puts down yellow, one puts down the cyan, and when you combine them, you get this. But notice the areas where all three are, which are these areas, did they come out black? Black, black? This picture is your book. You look, you look at the book, it looks kind of brownish. You keep brown color. So the final one would be to run it through a black on that. And the black they have to add, because when you combine them, you, in reality, you never get black, black on that. So this is why they call it four color. This is like posters and things like that. You know, nowadays some places you, you know, they use laser printers as a whole different thing, but you ever notice in your printer, if you have like a, a, a inkjet printer, you ever notice the color cartridge? What does the color cartridge have in it? It has, a lot of times it has three wells. And it has a yellow one, a magenta one, and a cyan one. And you have your black cartridge, so they combine, that's how you print out on that. So this is that printing. You laser printing, but still people still use the presses. You know, if you made a poster like, you know, the Star Trek poster over there or the periodic table of elements poster, you would run it basically a piece of paper goes to the press four times. With four different plates that you run it through on that. Which kind of leads us to a different topic. Well let's talk a little bit about color blindness. Because it always seems to be an interest. This is the traffic lights on St. Charles Street in New Orleans. The main, kind of the main bullet. It's kind of like the Market Street of New Orleans. Now, to be honest, most people who are colorblind, are, you know, this is black and white. Colorblindness does not mean you see in black and white. Although there is a rare, there are rare forms of that. Remember, colorblindness is a genetic link trait. It is, it, it is a sex link trait because the, it is a recessive gene that's on the X chromosome. And there is no matching Y chromosome, which is why boys are more likely to be colorblind than girls. Because they only need to get one, but girls have to get two. They have to get both recessives to be colorblind. That's why girls are, very, are much, it's much rarer 
But if guys, you're colorblind, you got it from mom. It came from your, your mother, because it comes on the X chromosome. But just for purpose's sake, you know, most common is red, green, colorblindness. Doesn't mean you can't see red and green. They have a hard time telling the difference between red and green. Okay, they confuse it. Which would be a, now, if you were driving around here and you were red, green, colorblind, how do you know it's a green light or a red light? Maybe you sell black and white. How would you know it's green light or red light? Top, yeah, top's red and the bottom is green. Never been to New Orleans. What color is that? If there's no one on the street, there's like no cars coming or anything, and you go across, go across the street, do you go or do you not go? How many of you think that's a red light? Is that a red light? How many of you think it's a green light? A lot of you be munched. Oh. It's a red light. Red light. And it kind of makes sense because you have it on the left, because actually in running lights on aircraft and ships, the left hand running light is red. The right hand running light is green. I don't know if that's why they did it. And, I, and I, to be honest, I don't know if every single, a lot of the lights are like this in New Orleans. I didn't really notice if they're all put the same way or if some are rotated the other way. That really, that really stink. Some are this way and some are that way. You know, I don't know if they're all, but a lot of the stoplights in New Orleans were sideways. You know, I've gone to other places where that's, that's the case, but, you know, but this was on the main drag. But colorblindness, you know, it's, a, it's a linked trait. It's just you have a hard time telling the difference. Now, for certain things, like in the military, like at the Naval Academy, you have, couldn't be colorblind. I mean, when you're on board a ship at night, you see the running lights, you know, if, if, you, the ships, if you're going that way and the ship's over there and you see a red running light, that means it's going away from you. If you see a green running light, it means it's coming toward you. You would really want to know that kind of information, but if you're colorblind and you can't tell the difference between red and green, it'd be a hard thing to do. So, you know, it's kind of sometimes it's a disqualification on that sort of thing, if you have to be able to see color. But, you know, for most part, most people don't really notice it. And you probably all had color blindness tests. Most of the case, the, the first one is usually, if you looked at you looked at these numbers, they were all like weird colors, and they asked you, what number do you see? And if you taking a test like that, or they ask you a letter, it was like a lot of different colors, and they ask you, what do you see? Because if you're colorblind, you see like, I think it's like, if you're normal color vision, you see one thing. If you have color blindness, you see something else. So on that, depending on how <coughs> it works. But the last thing we're going to cover is why is the sky blue? So any question about color blindness? Yes. yes. Sorry. Um, uh, I have a friend who also, when he looks at um, something blue, he just sees red. Is this that that could be another form of color blindness. Like I said, red, red, green is the most common form up to black people who actually see in black and white I mean, is, is a rare form of color blind. There are people who only see in black and white. I mean, you see the color, but yeah, but, the, but there's other forms of color blindness. There's like orange, it comes out like orange and blue, things like that. But there's, there's other kinds of rare. It's just the most common form is the red, green. And they still see in color. It's just, it, it's like, in other words, you, if you hand them oh, two socks, hand them a red, red and a green sock, and say, which is the, re which is the green sock? Uh, they may have a hard time telling which one's which. No. Most people that are colorblind begin to learn kind of what which ones are which. They usually they can pick the right one most of the time. But again, if it's a case where you know it's kind of a safety issue, you don't want to be out there guessing on that. So why is the sky blue? Well, it has to do with that's something called scattering. Scattering. Which is also why we get light in the room. Scattered light. And what happens, waves are going to be absorbed by atoms and molecules, and then they're going to be re-emitted in all directions. Kind of like they absorb it, and boom, they send them out in all directions. Now, large atoms are going to scatter large, larger wavelengths, and medium atoms and molecules are going to do medium wavelengths, and small ones are going to be small wavelengths. Well, air molecules, big or small? 
Small. So it's going to do the short wavelengths. Well, what is the shortest wavelength of visible light? What color? Uh, purple. Red. Purple. Purple. Violet. <coughs> Red is the longest. Violet would be the shortest. Anyone need more time on this one? Okay. Hold up a little bit. So, air molecules are small. So the short wavelengths are done. Now the most scattered light in the sky is violet. Violet light. More violet light gets scattered than any other color. But do we see violet very well? No, remember that little chart, in that little thing, violet. We don't see violet very well. The next most is blue. Do we see blue a lot better? Does the blue appear a lot brighter than violet? I mean, think about a rainbow. Can you see the violet in the rainbow? What usually does the, lo the, the last color of the rainbow look like? Does it look blue or violet? Mm -hmm. It looks blue, because the blue is much brighter than the violet. You know, so you have to have a particularly bright rainbow to see the violet. You know, the blue is much brighter, so we see blue in the sky. It's much brighter. Now, other colors are also done. The yellows, the greens, the reds, they are also scattered to a lesser degree, but again, the blue is so much brighter, doesn't see it. It's kind of like, remember we were talking about coming through the window, the reflection off the window? Why don't we see that reflection from the glass during the day? Is because the light from the outside is so much brighter, it washes it out. Same idea on that. So the sky is blue because it scatters. By the way, that's why we can see, we get light inside. Do we get light? If I turn all the lights in, off in the room, would it be light in here? We, I mean, if I opened up all the windows and we turned off the lights, would we still have light in the room? Yeah. Yes, we would. Why? I mean, look at the angle of the sun. Where's the sun right now? Sun is kind of up that way. I mean, the, so the rays from the sun are going that way. So are they shining in the room? No. So how's the light getting in? It's getting in by scattering. But it also tells us what colors of light are being scattered. Just one color or all colors? All the colors. All the colors get scattered in. This is how light. Because if we were on the moon, would we be having getting light from the, from the windows on the moon? If we are the same orientation, would light be coming in the room from the outside? No, because there's no what on the moon? Air. No air on the moon. Don't get scattered. You go to a shadow of the moon, it's just dark, it's black. You get a little bit of reflection from the ground, but for the most part, there's no light in a shadow. It's also, and actually, there is one color that is more scattered than violet. It's a color you can't see. Well, anybody have any ideas what, what is more scattered than violet? Well, what would be the next smallest wavelength? What would we call that? Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is much more scattered than violet. This is why I've ever been like in the shade all day long on a real sunny day and still ended up sunburned. Anybody have that happen to them? Because mm -hmm. ultraviolet light gets scattered into the shade. Just like the visible light gets scattered into the shade, that's why you can see ultraviolet will be scattered into the shade so you can still get sunburned. Well, no matter when you're outside, you need to wear your sunscreen. Okay? Anyone need more time? Now, we see blue better than violet. There's more blue scattering than the other colors. Now, clouds. Now, we're not talking, we look up right now, we see gray. That's because of absorption. If you were on top, if you were flying an airplane on top of the clouds, what do the clouds look like? They'd be white. They'd be white. What does that tell you about the size? So what does it tell you about the light being scattered? One color or all colors? All colors. What does it say about the particle size? One size or lots of sizes? Lots of different sizes, yeah. That's why the clouds, the edge of the clouds look white. The interior looks dark because the light gets absorbed. By the way, that's visible light. Guess what kind of light doesn't get absorbed very much by clouds? Again, it's that light we don't see. Ultraviolet. That's why you, know, you got to be careful. A day like this, you were at beach on a nice warm day that was all cloudy. You didn't come back with a sunburn if you don't wear your sunscreen. Yeah, 
When I grew up in Marin, basically it's like every day is overcast at the beach in Marin. You know, it's like it's very rare in the summer it seems like to have a clear day. And you come back just scorched if you didn't wear your sunscreen on that. But all this, so the clouds appear white because of scattering. The, the sky is blue because of scattering. We're going to talk about sunsets too. That's also scattering. Yes, sir. Water. 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 Droplets of water. Anyone need more time? So one of the same, it's kind of like what like the song says, purple mountains majesty. From a distance, the mountains do look purple. And again, this is because of light scattering out. We do see the purple because it's, you know, on that one, but notice the farther mountains look blue, the closer mountains look purple. It's also, ever when, that, when the inversion sets in, we get those really hot spells. What color does kind of the sky get? What does it kind of get? A, a, what color do you see? Kind of an orange color? That orange brownish color? Because a lot of the particulate stuff that gets caught, I mean, it looks awful. The stuff isn't really that bad for you. It looks nasty. But it's just because they're big molecules. Big molecules are going to scatter bigger wavelengths, which is why they scatter that orangish light. Although a, a little bit, not too bad. A lot of it, um, down in LA, literally down in LA, um, going to sea. I can remember going to sea during a smog alert in LA because my ship was stationed in Long Beach. And like this, if you ever know the spruce goose was in, the, in Long Beach, there's this like white dome and everything's white. And basically the sky was about that color. That was the sky during the day in Los Angeles during a smog alert, about this color. Like, okay, we're glad we're getting to sea. You know. Never saw birds in LA. I don't know what that's about. You know, place, you know, here you see birds and things like that in the city. There you see birds. Never saw any birds in Long Beach. No seagulls. No little birds. I don't know what that was about. All right, so we are done with our lecture today. Come up and grab your kit. Grab your kit. You will also need like a calculator. Your own. Your calculator.